Welcome to my channel. This is where you have lots of devotional Bible studies and encouragement through your faith work. Now, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll see you soon. Hello, my name is Ifoba Savel. If you're new around here, kindly click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way you don't miss a new video when it drops. We have been going through the Bible in the last two, three months now, and we have we have gone through the Psalms, and now we are in Jeremiah. We've gone through the Psalms, we've gone through the Proverbs, we've gone through Isaiah, uh, and here we are gradually coming to an end with Jeremiah. Now, the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 5, 35 all the way to chapter 37 is what we have for today, which is our day 68. The theme of our discussion is, for the Lord hid them. Okay, so let's start with Jeremiah chapter 34 verse 36. Now we see that God makes reference to the Rechabites. Now the Rechabites are a rare community and um, there was something about them that God said, you know what, go learn from these guys. Let's go to verse 6. He said, but they said, this is what God told them. God told Jeremiah, you know what, take these guys and give them wine to drink. Now not only did he bring them, you know, did he want to offer them wine, he offered them wine in the house of the Lord, in the chamber okay of one of the one of the um, the men of god so <laughs> it's like god was setting them up but god was setting them up as um a good example you know a good example to the children of israel when they were offered verse 6 said but they said we will drink the wine for jonadab the son of Rechab, our father commanded us saying ye shall drink no wine neither neither ye nor your sons forever. There were other rules that their father gave them. Now, guess what? These guys were sticking to that rule. They were standing in that, in that instruction that their fathers, the forefathers had given them. This brings us to, the po um, to that point where it is important for you to establish, okay, where there is this establishment of children's obedience, contrary to what we see in today's world, where disobedience is seen, is glorified, and um, in as much as we want our children to be independent, to think for themselves, to be uh, curious, adventurous, all of those things, we still, there's still ground values, okay? There's still ground values, grounded, um, ground values, like common values that our children should have, especially when it comes to the scriptures. There are some there are things that cannot be negotiated when it comes to godly values. They cannot be negotiated. These are some of the, the, the things that, uh, that have been lost even in Christian homes or in, in, faith, in faith homes. You, you find out that generations before, these, uh, there were legacies that were being handed over from the previous, from generations back. And those legacies are gradually thinning out. We're not seeing that faith being, trans, um, being transferred in a whole and saying this is this is our value this is those we value what god's word above what the standard we value god's word above what the, um, the standard of word is right now we value god in our home this is the standard now in many homes that is becoming obsolete is becoming um absent it's not seen there's no legacy no establishment of uh, of faith I read the, the story of the Rechabites and it, it really dawned on me the importance of making sure that we establish, making sure we establish a legacy, a legacy that we can hand over to our children as they see us live out our faith. We're not perfect. We're not saying we're perfect, but we recognize God's help. So if our children can see us both in our highs and lows and see how God, how we rely on God and how God helps us through, it will help them build their faith, their own faith in Christ, all right? So going on, God recognized that obedience of that small community. God saw that they were faithful to obey their own parents. So obedience is not overrated. God sees when our children are obedient. God knows when we obey. God, God values it. That's why he used this small group of people as an example to the whole nation. That go let, look at these guys. Give them wine. They will reject it. Tell them to do this. They'll tell you, no, this is what our father said. Our father said, don't cross this line. This is the boundary. And they respect that boundary that has been passed into, you know, passed on and on. So much so is a part of their DNA. All right. 
Now, if you compare, you know, comparing between the nations, you can you can check that out in Jeremiah chapter 15, 35, verse 15, um, 35, 18 to 19. God recognized how important. It just shows that God does not joke with. God does not joke with uh, 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 obedience. He doesn't joke with it. Okay. Um, one more thing I want us to, to look at. Jeremiah chapter 36, verse 23 to 24. It says, and it came to pass when um, that when Jehu died. Now, in, in 36, we see that God had told Jeremiah, uh, he said, you know what? You have to write these things in the scroll. You need to write all the, all the instructions I'm giving you in the scroll. Uh, uh, and um, the scribe, or Baruch, the son of Nera, was writing. If you go to Jeremiah 36, verse 8, he wrote everything as Jeremiah commanded him. As Jeremiah spoke, he was you know, putting all these things down. Um, then he went and he told the people, this is what God is saying. Some princes heard, they're like, okay, let's go tell the, tell the king. On and on, as they got to the king, the king heard the words, the heavy words of, you know what, you guys have to repent, otherwise God is bringing destruction to this place. The king reacts bitterly. In fact, it's so it's so bad that when I was reading that scripture, let's read 23 to 20, um, 24, it says, and it came to pass that when Jehu died, had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the pen knife. This is God's word that has been inscribed on the scroll. Now he read it one, two, three or four, and then he stripped off, uh, you know, he, he, he used the knife and then he, he, he cut it off. He cut it with the pen knife and cut it into the fire that was on the hearth. Okay. Until all the, all the roll was consumed in the fire. Verse 24 says, Yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments, neither the king nor the servants that heard these words. These are heavy words that you know God had told Jeremiah. You have to go and warn the king. The destruction is coming. If he repents now, okay, if there's um, a repentance now, then definitely something can be done. Okay, there is going to be redemption or repent of the destruction that is coming to um to the land. But these guys here all the things that is, you know, all the all the warnings, and they are decent. It's like they have no remorse whatsoever. They have nothing, nothing like repentance or remorse. Nothing like some form of emotion. The Bible says that they were there was no form of intercession. There was nothing. Unlike I, I, I remember Jonah. You know, the book of Jonah when he went to Nineveh, and then all of that experience, the king and how the king responded. He tore his clothes, went on sackcloth, and all of that. There's this form of repentance, the national repentance, the national call for prayer. There was nothing like that. This is, these are God's people. There was nothing like that. There, and then bring it back to our day. There is, there is a serious desensitization. When it comes to sin, we start to feel that it's okay to do certain things because everybody's doing it. There is a serious desensitization to sin. There's no repentance. There's no genuine repentance. There's no, um, there's no, yeah, there's basically nothing. It's desensitization. Okay, we just feel it's okay. Just feel it's okay. But guess what? There are a few good men. There are a few good men. Despite the the um, the evil going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, God still has a few people there. He still has got a remnant. If you look at, uh, you look at Jeremiah chapter 36, verse 30 to 31. If you look at that, let's see, it says, Thus said the Lord, um, the Lord of Jehoiakim, Thus said the Lord of Jeho Jehoiakim, king of Judah, have, okay, he shall have done, he shall have none to sit. This is his punishment for burning up the scroll, that he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and the, his dead body will be cast in the day in the day to the heat and the night to the frost, and I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. And I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I have pronounced against them. But they hearken not. They still did not listen. They still did not listen. God has given them a, um, you know, a command. He has written it down. And then you, it's like you take the word of God and they, that, that was painfully written down. And then you throw it into the fire. And burn it up. Wow. Is it is it different from what we are experiencing today? Is it different? What do you think? Do you think we are not at that border of 
iniquity, where things are getting worse and people are blatantly, you know, cursing, you know, cursing the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or cursing at God or without fear, without fear. There's, there's some things that, that if you study God's word and you compare it to our day, it's not, it's not different. It's not different. That's why Jeremiah wept for his people. He cried. Like, can't you see the destruction coming? And they turned their ears. Wow. The hatred for those that speak the truth is over the roof. It's way high. It's, it's more than we think. But really, there's a, a serious aggression against the truth. There's a serious aggression against those that say, this is evil. This is not of God. This is evil. This is not of God. There's an aggression. And, and so much so that the church is watered down because we want to welcome everybody. There's so much aggression against the truth. Look at Jeremiah chapter 37, verse 12, all the way to 21. Look at the, um, the prevailing situation, that, that the, the precarious situation, the dangerous situation that Jeremiah the prophet had to go through as a result of standing on the side of truth. Now, being a truth sayer, it's a difficult thing. You're going to be hated. You will not be liked. Okay, that's, that's a given. That's established. Um, the point is, those that deceive you will desert you when the truth comes. Look at Jeremiah 37, verse 18 to 19. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto the king, of Zed um, to the, unto the king Zedekiah, What have I offended against thee, or against thy servants, or against these people, that ye have put me in prison? Where are now your prophets which prophesied unto you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against the land? Where are all the false prophets? that are nowhere to be found. When, they, when Nebuchadnezzar came, they, had, they were nowhere to be found. Really. So the, the point is, when we listen to deceit and lies, when the truth comes, when we come face to face with the truth, all those who have lied against us, who have, oh, sorry, who we have listened to, like in terms of lies and deceit, all those who have been, been there deceiving and fanning you and flattering you, you know, all of those guys, you won't see them anywhere. You won't see them. You won't see those who have been deceiving you anywhere. The point is you're going to be desert, deserted. But the one who stays by the truth walks with God and is never alone, is never alone. If you notice, the theme of the discussion has to do with God hiding Jeremiah. They came to kill him. They actually came for his life. In the book of Jeremiah 36, verse 26, it says, But the king commanded um, Jeremiah, the son of Hamalek, and Siriah, the son of Azrael, and she uh, Shilemai, and the son of Abidil, the son of Abidil, to take Baruch the scribe, and Jeremiah the prophet, but God hid them. But the Lord hid them. God will always hide you from the attacks of the enemy. You just stay in the path of truth. Amen. If we stay in the path of truth, God knows how to keep us safe. God knows how to tuck us in and lock us away from the attacks of the enemy. So the point is, the aggression is real. When you say you want to walk with God, the aggression is real. But what do you do? You walk in faith. You speak the truth just as it is. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe, share this video. Somebody may be blessed. Somebody may be itching. Or somebody may need this. Who knows? Okay? God bless you.